Hello and welcome to Teco. We are going to go through everything you need to know about referencing for your assessments. So what is referencing? Why is it important? And how are you going to do it in your assessments using Microsoft Word? After that, we'll take a look at when you need to reference and when you don't. What is referencing? Referencing is basically giving credit where credit is due. We want to acknowledge the person or the people that we get our information and ideas from. So you'll see here I've added a cheeky citation and the screenshot there shows the full reference that you find at the end of the document. So that gives the reader all the information they need to go and find the source for themselves. Why do we need to reference? <laughs> As we've already covered, we reference to acknowledge our sources and give credit to the right people. It also provides credibility to your work. By referencing a reputable source, you're adding credibility and authority to your argument. It demonstrates that your work is based on solid evidence. It also allows the reader to verify what you're saying by following up and checking it out for themselves. What? Oh my God, who told you? Equally, a user might want to simply find out more about the topic. It gives them a good place to start. Proper referencing helps us steer clear of plagiarism. Plagiarism is malpractice, presenting someone else's work as your own, and it comes with serious disciplinary consequences. I'm sorry, you're fired. Get out of here. Right? So it's something you want to avoid and you want to make sure you're citing your references properly. With Pearson at Excel, you must use either the Harvard referencing or the IEEE referencing. Harvard would be the most widely used. It's where you place the author's surname and the date in brackets after the sentence you're referencing. The reference list itself will then be in alphabetical order according to author surname. The full publication details will then be in this specific Harvard format, an example of which you can see here. The IEEE method is actually created by engineers because engineers like to be precise. They use the numerical citation style where the number of the citation appears in brackets. The reference list is then in numerical order. The publication details will be in the IEEE format, which you'll see here is actually different from the Harvard format. We don't want to be sitting and writing all this out. Instead, we will get Microsoft Word to do it for us. Do it! Just do it! So what we want to do is add our first citation. So we click where we want to add it. We go to the references tab in the top here and you'll see this section here. We want to insert a citation and we're adding a whole new source. Up here, you choose the type of source you want to add and whatever source you add will give you the recommended fields. Let's just say I got my information from a website from Pego. They want me to understand referencing company I don't really need that one the year they wrote the information was 2020 don't really need to say the month and date but I will say that I accessed it on the 3rd of April and in here you want to paste in the URL of the web page so go to your browser copy and paste it in so that you're directing the reader to the exact web page you're getting the information off that's really important to use the full URL along here, okay? Just for the sake of this tutorial though, I'm just gonna take us to Tickle's landing page. Hit okay, and now we can see that I've now added my reference in here. Very, very easy. So you can see that it is the one in square brackets because up here I have selected the IEEE style. If I change my mind and I decide I want to use Harvard referencing, I can simply click Harvard. And now it's by the author and date. Now what we want to do is create the reference list itself. Again, very easy. Just hit bibliography and then just pick the title you want. So in my case, I like references. So now what's happened is it's appeared in the middle of my text, which is not what I want. We're gonna put that back to the way it was and we're gonna click exactly where we want our reference list to appear, which is at the very end of our work. There's my references. If you hover over it, you can see it highlights it in its very own box. So Word knows that's your references. And there it is written out for me. I didn't have to type all that out manually, just a click of a button.
Let's say I then go to add some more information. So this time we're just going to say it's a journal article. John Smith has written an article on referencing in a journal called Academic Writing. 2021 um, and the page numbers for his article within that journal we will say are 22 to 25. I'll say it's volume one and issue one. You would obviously be putting in the right information into there. Let's click OK and insert our next citation. Right, we've got two citations but our references still only have one so we need to click and then you'll see up here hit that button and now it has updated our citations. I will switch back to IEEE any point and Word automatically updates your whole document to match. So that's the good thing about Word is it does it all for you. Another nice wee thing just to note is that you can manage your sources up here. So we'll see this is the current list of references that I have added but Word keeps a good memory of all the citations I have ever used. And if I did want to add previous references that I've used in other documents, then I could just copy that source back over again without having to write it out. Um, and I could insert that source here. So for example, I'll go insert citation and I'll just pick from one of my current list. So I'll just say it's RS components. And then again, I'll update my reference list. And there we are. Now, what you'll notice now is that even though I haven't got six citations in here, because I have six sources, on my current list here, my reference list includes six sources. So something to be wary of. If you do add something to your current sources, make sure that it is real information source that you have actually consulted. And that's it for referencing. Very, very simple. A click of a button and you have a full reference list with no spelling mistakes in the proper formats that it needs to be. When do we need to reference? Okay. Basically, you should reference a source whenever you use someone else's ideas, information or words in your own work. This will include direct quotations. When you directly quote someone else's words, you must enclose the quote in quotation marks and provide a citation indicating the source. Paraphrasing. That's when you rephrase someone else's words, but you still need to acknowledge the original source. Summarizing. If you summarize the main points or findings from a source, even if you don't use their exact words, you still need to cite them. Data and statistics. So any data or statistical information obtained from another source should be cited. In the same way, any images, graphs, or figures that you use, so any visible elements created by somebody else, you will still need to reference them as your source. All right, there are a few instances where we don't need to reference. We're going to look at those now. So first up is common knowledge. Okay, the sky is blue. Humans generally have a head, 10 fingers, and 10 toes. We don't need to go and find sources for that information because it's common knowledge. If you are given your own personal opinion on something or your own insights or observations, such as I'm looking at this piece of legislation and in my workplace, I can see that it applies to this particular situation. That's you given your own insight. You don't need to reference your own ideas or your own original thoughts. Any well-established theories within your field don't need to be referenced. So for example, if we're considering science and mathematical fields, you don't need to reference if you're talking about Pythagoras theorem because it's a well-established theory or concept. You don't need to come find his original works in order to cite it. Everybody knows what it is in that field. Public domain works don't need to be cited in terms of legally and academic work. However, for the purposes of our assessments, even if you do get something off public domain, such as a YouTube video or an open source site, we still want you to provide the reference because it shows that you are doing your own research. And finally, your own work. So if you create a graphic or draw a circuit diagram or anything like that from your own head, again, along with personal insights, it's your own work, your own ideas. You don't need to cite. It. And that's it for referencing. No, what are you waiting for? Do it! Just do it! Yes, you can! Just do it!